What's up everyone, today I'm gonna let you look behind the scenes into my workflow using my Icon Face add-on for Blender. Icon Face is a proprietary tool that I built to add a customizable Lego inspired face rig to any scene. You can download my add-on for free at iconbrick.com or you can buy the paid version which consistently updates and has more features. So let's get into it. So quickly I'm gonna run through how to install Icon Face, but you install it like any other Blender add-on. I'm currently running Blender version 3.6, but Icon Face is compatible with version 3.5 and up. After we download the add-on from iconbrick.com, we're gonna come up here to edit, preferences, and click install. We're gonna navigate to wherever our add-on downloaded, click it, and click install add-on. Once it installs, we'll check this box right here. Here we can see what version we're running and that the location of the add-on is in the end menu. So now when I click N, we have access to the icon face menu over on the right. First and simplest way to add icon face to your scene is to just click add icon face. This will add the entire object to wherever your 3D cursor is. So you can add an icon face object to your scene like I just showed you, or you can add it to an existing Lego head. So I went ahead and imported these three figures from Mecha Bricks, and I gave this middle one a quick walk cycle animation. I'm going to use these three figures to demonstrate the three modes that icon face has. The default mode of icon face is replace original head. Basically, if you select a head and click add icon face, it'll actually replace that entire head model, take its material and add it to this new optimized head model. You can tell it's the optimized head if it says icon up here. And that's the first mode. It's simple and it just replaces the head. The second mode is hide original head and parent. This is really useful for heads that have already been animated, are part of a rig, have a parent, or have keyframes themselves. For example, this head is parented to this rig and just replacing it would cause it to lose its animation data. So what hide original head and parent does is it doesn't delete this head, it actually just hides it, adds an optimized head, and parents it to this one, and also takes its material. So now you can see it keeps the animation data. This means you don't have to worry about faces while you're animating until the end. The third icon face mode is keep original head. This mode doesn't add a new head object at all. It just adds the icon face to the head you already have. I don't recommend that because third party head models might not be optimized for this rig. And you can see it kept the original head model. And those are the modes that determine the logic for the head replacement. Now for the fun part, the icon face modifier. If you click on the face, and come to your modifiers tab, we'll see all the customization options for the face. I don't wanna waste your time, so I'm gonna run through these super quick. I'm also gonna switch into rendered mode so we can really see what's going on. Parent is the head object. You shouldn't really change this unless you know what you're doing. Subdivisions is the amount of geometry in the face. If you find that your face is clipping or if you used keep original head, you might wanna turn this up, but I'd say two is probably the right spot. You can see what this does in the geometry of the face. If you have a slower machine and you're just animating, I would set it to one, but when you're rendering, I'd keep it on too. Rough and edges controls this fade along the outside of the face. If you want sharper edges, you can turn this down to zero, but I like anywhere from 0.7 to one for the most realistic result. If you wanna include eyelashes or lips on your character, you can check these boxes. I'll get to the shape keys in a minute, but I just wanna show you that these also adjust dynamically with the animations. Beard is where you can choose the beard decal if your character has one. Extras are extra decals, like freckles, dark circles under the eyes, or a character's jawline. Since my workflow had to be industry ready, I needed to be able to customize every little color really quickly, which you can do right here. But for the truest LEGO look, I would keep these on their default values. Glasses just adds more customization. You can also change the color of the glasses and the secondary color. If you want to see through the glasses, all you have to do is change the alpha value of these colors. I'm constantly adding more customization options as Icon Face updates, which is a good reason to buy the full version because the light version of the add-on will not have any future updates. The reason I built this add-on in the first place was to speed up my animation process. In the animation industry, faces have moved towards a shape key based animation system. Right now, Icon Face has almost 100 shape keys that you can use to quickly animate your faces. All you have to do is choose the face shape that you want to keyframe and click I over the number. Then you can move forward a few frames, change the shape key, and hit I again. Shape key animations of the face lead to more natural results than typical rigs. And if you want to switch the face from one shape key to another, all you have to do is keyframe the next shape key, move forward a few frames, and switch them. Because of the advanced geometry node setup of Icon Face, all your animations will stay true to LEGO style. Let's say I want my character to blink. I can come down here to the icon blink shape key, add a keyframe, move forward a couple frames, close the eyes, keyframe, forward a couple more frames, 
and open the eyes and keyframe that. Now I added a natural blink in a matter of seconds. The only problem with that is turning shape keys on and off over and over can get really tedious. And I had to be able to animate even faster than that. In the paid version of Icon Face, you'll notice three extra tabs in your menu. I'm gonna go ahead and add an icon face to this mesh, and you'll notice these tabs fill up with shape keys. If you don't see these shape keys, make sure you select the icon face. You'll also notice there's two buttons for each shape key, an eye icon and a keyframe icon. The eye button allows you to preview shape keys, and the keyframe button sets the shape key and adds a keyframe to your timeline. It also cleans up all the other shape keys keyframes so that only the one you choose is visible. So let's say I move forward 10 frames, and keyframe a different shape key. That's gonna blend between the two keyframes seamlessly. Let's say I want him to smile until frame 20. I'll click the keyframe button again, and you'll see that it will hold that keyframe. And let's say at 23, I want it to go back to what it was originally. Click the keyframe button, and it's animated. The first tab is a list of typical face poses I use in my animations, and the second tab is a list of phonetic shape keys that I use for talking. This is one of my favorite parts of the add-on and makes animating dialogue really easy. Let's say I want my character to say icon break. I'll go forward a few frames, hit the I shape key, forward one more, hit the C, K shape key, forward one more, O, and you get the idea. Now I'll end it with the icon mouth closed shape key. Now when I press play, okay that was really fast, select my keyframes and hit S and slow it down. And now when I play my animation, my character says, icon brick. To demonstrate the third panel, I went ahead and added a simple animation to the face. When I make animations, there's a lot of repetitive keyframing that could be shortened. For example, my character has to blink every couple seconds. Usually when you animate a blink, it's around three or four keyframes, and that takes time. The purpose of the quick effects panel is to make repetitive keyframing quicker. Right now, the only quick effect is add blink, but this will expand with future updates. Let's say I want my character to blink at frame 10. All I have to do is go to frame 10 and click add blink. Now when I play my animation, my character blinks at frame 10. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one at frame 25. Automating tasks like this allows me to save a lot of time and work on bigger projects. If you dig deep into the icon face shape keys, you'll notice there's a ton that don't show up on your menu. These are the industry standard facial mocap keys so that you can use any third party facial mocap software with icon face. I wanna keep this video to just the basics, so we'll go over mocap another time. And that's how you use icon face. Don't forget to try it free at iconbrick.com. And if you wanna support my art or start making Lego animations of your own, go ahead and buy the paid version. If you make anything with icon face, send me a DM at iconbrick on Instagram. I can't wait to see what you guys make.